Hello everybody, my name is Rudolfo and today I have a few questions for you guys with my best answer. So let's find out how much do you know. So let's go to the first question. What's the second law of thermodynamics? What's the second law of thermodynamics? What does Boyle law state? What does Boyle's law state? What's the difference between superheaters and heat heaters? What's the difference between superheaters and heat heaters? Name six methods used to control superheat temperature. Name six methods used to control superheat temperature. Why radiant and convection superheaters used in combination? Why are radiant and convection superheaters used in combination? What effect does high excess air have on superheat temperature? How about ash build up on furnace walls? And ash build up in the superheater. What effect does high excess air have on superheaters? What effect does super... What effect high excess air have on ash building up on the furnace walls? And what effect does high excess air have on ash build up in the superheaters? So first question, what's the second law of thermodynamics? No machine, actual or ideal, can both continuous and completely transform heat into mechanical energy. Nothing is 100% efficient. What? Does Boyle's law state when temperature is held constant, the volume of a given weight of gas varies inversely as absolute pressure. When temperature is held constant, volume varies inversely as absolute pressure. What's the difference between superheaters and heat heaters? So both the superheater and heat heater add enthalpy to steam, adding heat, adding energy to the steam. With the difference being that superheater, that's the difference that heat heated steam already done some work in the turbine, okay? So the only difference is that heat heated steam has already done some work in the turbine. Name six methods used to control superheat temperature. So superheat temperature can be controlled by a temperation and this superheating. You can do radiate radiant and convection type superheater in a combination. Uh, you can have separately fired burners. You can have tilting burners. You can use Flue gas recirculation. 
you can have some bypass dampers and you can use the soot blowers okay so why are radiant and convection superheaters used in a combination the radiant superheater has a decreasing temperature profile on a load increase and the convection superheater has a rising temperature profile on load increase so together use it together a flatter temperature profile is obtained what effect does high excess air have on superheater temperature how about ash and build up on the furnace wall and ash build up in superheater high excess air increase the superheater temperature ash build up on furnace wall was increase superheat ash build up on soup on furnace wall increase superheater temperature ash build up on the superheater decrease the superheater so let's talk about okay uh Thermodynamic is very important for the guys that are going for the beginner's license, okay? So no machine can do both continuously and completely transform heat into mechanical energy. Nothing is 100% efficient, okay? Uh... For engineers, okay, low low level engineers, this is very important. Superheater and heat heater steam. So when you pass the steam back into the furnace, okay, you will add more BTUs to that steam, okay. But the superheated steam didn't go to the turbine yet. But the heat heated steam has done some work at this at the turbine, you know, and it sends it back to the boiler to get heat heated, to get more energy, get dry or drier. So the difference is only that. Uh, six methods. This for higher license, okay? This two one, or lower engineer license. This is for higher engineer license, okay? How to control super heat temperature, okay? A temperation and this superheating is basically adding some uh, saturate steam into the superheat steam, okay? to take some of the energy or the temperature on the on the superheated radiant and convection type of superheater in a combination so that's what we discussed here okay uh separately fire burners so if your turbine is already producing, let's say your gas, your boiler is already uh, producing uh, that amount, you know, like it is on like high fire, you know, and you cannot. If you have a, another burner to put on, you can increase the temperature on the furnace. So, separate fire burners. Uh, also can be like the duct burners you know it's a separate burner that will add more heat into the furnace okay tilting burners so tilting burners like if you want a more more superheated temperature 
you can move the burners to go more direct to the superheater. And if you don't, if you wanna decrease the temperature of the superheated steam, you can move around so the, the burner doesn't go straight to the superheater, okay? The flame, the fire. Uh, flue gas recirculation, okay? Uh, that will vary on the location of the superheater, but you can get some of the flue gas, you know, and get the flue gas that's a little, that's, uh, has less temperature and send it back, you know, to pass through the superheater. So it will make the superheater absorb less heat of the flue gas because you're already using some flue gas that's colder than flue gas that you're burning the fuel, right? Uh, bypass dampers. You can like open or close a bypass to send the flue gas to another direction. Not all the flue gas, send all the flue gas to the superheater. You can send less flue gas to the superheater and control the superheated temperature by that. Open and closing dampers. And soot blower, right? You can start sending steam with the flue gas. And you're going to reduce the temperature of the flue gas, adding some moist, some steam. So that's our methods use it. Not, maybe none of them is gonna be available for you, but that's are some things that you could add, okay? Why radiant and convection superheaters are uh, used in combination? It's very important to know, okay? Radiant superheater is closer to the fire okay and, and convection superheater is more further down on the furnace okay so when you have uh, a load increase okay uh, the radiant will get less because the 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 combustion process will push it harder will push faster to the, the radiant and the convex is gonna get more uh, heat temperature. So on an increased load, the convection gets more and the radiant get less because we'll pass more air with less flame combination kind, okay? But uh, but when that's... Uh, when the load is decreased, the radiant gets more, okay? Because the flame and the combustion will help right there close to the radiant. So the radiant will absorb more heat than the convection that's behind or after, okay? So excess air. Excess air increase the temperature on the superheater, okay? Because you can get a perfect combustion using high excess air. Burn all the fuel. But when you have excess air, okay, you're burning more fuel, uh, that can build up ash on the water walls, okay? So when you build up ash on the water walls okay the water walls will absorb less heat so for the superheater the superheater will increase because when the water wall is kind of getting insulated all that heat goes to the superheater okay but if the ash start to build up on the superheater will isolate the superheater Okay, and then the temperature is going to be low as ash build up on the superheater. We'll not have that transfer, that good transfer anymore, okay? 
So, guys, keep studying. Keep the discipline. Go over and over. Listen these questions and answers in your car. And I see you guys on the next video. Thank you.